Good evening and uh, welcome to uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission monthly meeting, September 26th. Let me uh, first of all introduce um, the commissioners. To my right, uh, Commissioner Bill Watson, representing the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Our favorite administrative assistant, Laurie. John Nyan, representing the town of Hampton, chairman. To my left, Fran McMahon, commissioner, representing the Rockingham Planning Commission. Mike Hausman, commissioner, representing Dredd. Bob, Watt, uh, Bob Preston, uh, commissioner, representing the Chamber of Commerce. Chuck Rage, commissioner, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. And I'm going to let Chuck introduce our new commissioner from the Hampton Beach Village District. I'd like to introduce Richard Renier. He's a member of um, the Hampton Beach Village District, and he's now our new commissioner. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, next, public hearing. As I mentioned when the commission was here, um, there's a public hearing coming up that I plan to attend uh, up in Epping on the 9th of October. Uh, if all of you recall, um, we were very supportive, and I believe it was a unanimous vote of this commission back last spring to encourage the town of Hampton to put Ocean Boulevard um, as a proposed uh, new uh, project on the 10-year uh, transportation improvement plan of DOT. Um, and we've watched how it's gone through the process. Uh, a number of those meetings last spring, Mr. Watson uh, was kind enough to kind of keep us involved with time frames. Um, and um, I think one of the things that he um, has constantly done is keep us up to date on what the the process is um, for this whole plan. One of the things that has come out of uh, this process, going from the town to the region to the state, and now to this step of public hearings that the governor councilors are conducting across the state, is a whole bunch of uh, projects and there are to make it simple for you all you want to jot down this um, there is uh, three Rockingham County projects one on page 20 one on page 25 and one on page 61. Interesting enough, um, and it's a credit to Rockingham County, but it's, it's my, uh, I've been told that there is uh, approximately $50 million in the pool. And when you add the three um, projects that have been recommended for Rockingham County, it makes up 25 million of that. So there's a big share of money that has been recommended to go into Rockingham County. The three projects that are right now in play is uh, a road project uh, in Epping on 125, um, a, um, a project over in Hampton Falls at the intersection of Route 1 and Route 88, and then the uh, project of the Hampton uh, Bridge, the Underwood Bridge. Um, for some reason, and it's not worth talking about tonight because I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows, including Bill, uh, why when we were rated so high at Ocean Boulevard that that uh, didn't make one of the three. Um, but I think it's really important for us to advocate that the Governor Councilor Sununu take into consideration the importance of Ocean Boulevard and the reconstruction of that and possibly, um, you know, move us into one of those three. And unfortunately, taking 
one, uh, one or two of those out and putting Ocean Boulevard in. Um, I can tell you personally, because I've done it, every time I look at a federal government grant for the Beach Commission to apply for, um, when it comes to transportation, uh, we are not, um, it is not to our advantage not to have a project like Ocean Boulevard on a statewide master plan um, because the federal government is not going to fund a project, a sizable project, that the state has not deemed as an important project in transportation. The only way that can happen is if it gets on to the 10-year plan. So um, I don't need any motion, I believe, because we've already supported uh, in a, a motion that had been made in the spring for us to strongly support Ocean Boulevard construction project. Uh, but I, um, I think it would be important. Um, and I, as I said, I plan to attend the Epping one uh, and talk to uh, Governor Council Sununu uh, about uh, the reasons why uh, it is important for us uh, to have Ocean Boulevard as a priority on the, uh, the Technia Transportation Improvement Plan. Questions, comments? Would you guys like a little bit of insight? Yes. <laughs> um, where we're in the middle of it now, just if I seem tired tonight, we've done 17 out of 25 public hearings so far. We did 11 over the last two weeks. We've done six yesterday and today. So this morning I started up in Wakefield with Council, well, Council Burton was supposed to be there, he didn't make it. And then we were in Conway with Council Burton late this afternoon. Um, and we've got until Monday to, to recuperate before we start again. Um, there's a couple of things that, that John handed out to all of you, and so you're getting a preview of what you'll hear in Epping if you attend. And as important as the list of projects is, if you'll indulge me for two minutes, I'll, I'll steal the thunder of myself or one of the other uh, folks from DOT that will be talking in Epping. There's a handout inside of the, the front cover that looks like this. And I want to just point out two or three things to you all quickly. Um, and this is, this is important for the Beach Commission to think about. It's important for everybody to think about, but you guys are in touch more. Um, and Councillor Sununu is going to focus on this. On page three, um, this, this shows all the funding sources for all the projects that are in the 10-year plan. And if you look at the first column that's titled FHWA along the left, this plan, what we're showing in here, it runs a deficit of $225 million over 10 years. If you add up all those columns, uh, how much we've got programmed in the draft document over the 10 years. We're assuming $150 million a year, which is the level of funds we get now from Federal Highway. If we just compare expenses to revenues, we're running a deficit of $227 million. Councilor Sununu is a little bit less than thrilled about that. Um, there's, there's reasons for us running a small deficit, but that's a little bit greater than he's comfortable with. And something that we've seen from him um, with the last 10-year plan update when he was a counselor, and we expect to hear from him again this year, is whatever happens, if we're going to add projects to the 10-year plan, we need to make sure that we remove lesser priorities from the 10-year plan so the, the financial impact is a net zero result. So as you talk about the, the projects the Rockingham Planning Commission proposed as priorities, um, I think that Ocean Boulevard and their list of priorities ran mid-range. There were 80 or so projects, I think, that they submitted to us for consideration, and, and Ocean Boulevard ran somewhere in the middle of that. Um, and as I was jotting down, the, the, the Underwood Bridge was number 22 of their priorities. Um, Epping was number 11, and Hampton Falls was number 4 in terms of priorities that came out of the Planning Commission. So we, and, and it doesn't mean that 1, 2, and 3 weren't funded. 1, 2, and 3 may already be in a 10-year plan. Rockingham Planning Commission was also confirming existing priorities and new priorities. But 
so point one is just that we're, we're running a deficit already, and it's something that needs to be um, be considered. Flipping over to this, the, the next page, page four, it's the same information. It just looks, it, it, it's a pie chart. Um, simply the point that federal highway dollars make up about half of our total products in this 10-year plan dollar-wise. Um, the friend you were asking Commissioner Rose earlier for comments on rooms and meals taxes, ask us at the hearing the same thing that we feel about how revenue should be generated for the 10-year the plan, and we won't support gas tax over casino gambling, which were the two options on the table last session. Revenue is, is revenue, and that's something that we need. What's important about this slide is to recognize the legislature has zero dollars in the budget to match federal highway dollars. So we're effectively um, not spending our federal dollars with the most efficiency we can based on the policy decisions the legislature has made. We have ways of living within those means, and that's what we've done for, for a few rounds now of the 10-year plan. Um, but it's something that we hope that the legislature will take on um, in their del deliberations one of these sessions. There's some room for hope. Both um, key members in the House and the Senate are talking about revenue options. Um, there was a senator at one of the, the, the Gasset meetings held in Derry last night that was um, fairly supportive of, of perhaps a new gas tax. Um, and then the last slide is page eight, and this gets to John's point about where, where the number 50 million comes from. We get about $150 million a year in federal highway dollars. It's a, it's a, it's a good average, it's a reasonable average that we've, we've seen over the last few years. About half of that funding goes to projects um, that are simply preserving and maintaining what's there. Um, 35 to $40 million a year in roadway and paving work, 30 to 35 in bridge work. We spend about 25 to 30, the, the chart says $28 million a year for programs that are mandated by the Federal Highway Administration. Um, I've heard a lot in our Gasset hearings about the strings that come attached. Council Burton would say, you want the King's money, you do the King's bidding, or something along those lines. So if we want the federal dollars, we live with the, the strings we have. So $28 million a year, on average, goes to programs the Federal Highway tells us we have to spend it on. For the work that's been done on I-93 between the state line and Exit 3, and then the work that's ongoing at Exit 5 right now, the legislature had authorized us to bond uh, those proceeds. The, the interest rate was 1.26% at the time. It was about as good as we could ever get for, for bond interest, so the department said, great. Uh, what it requires is about 16 to $17 million a year off the top of our federal funds for the next 10 to 12 years go to repaying those bonds. And then it cost us about $11 million a year to engineer and purchase right away for all the projects. You add all that up, that's about $125 million a year of the 150 that's gone already just to keep existing preservation maintenance efforts going. That leaves about $25 million for new projects. We're adding two years to the 10-year plan. So that's 25 times two years is the $50 million that John came up with. Um, I'll be the person on the other side of the table that you guys are all commenting to along with Councilor Sununu and other officials from the department. Whether you come to the Epping meeting on the 9th, uh, we'll also be in Portsmouth <coughs> on the 16th. Uh, we'll be at the Pease Intermodal Center. CNJ Trailways is hosting us. Um, we encourage. Uh, it was interesting. I was up in Conway today, and, and no disrespect to anyone in Hampton, I heard from our Conway Village um, Oh, from our Conway Village folks that, you know, the pavement is above the curb reveal and that any rainstorms, the rain is running into the businesses and when is the department going to come down and fix the, the Conway Village uh, area? It was interesting to hear that from them and, and think about that it, it's happening in more places. In that community, it was also pointed out that they had funding to um, rebuild the sidewalks and do a lot of streetscape work and uh, it was actually the Conway Village Fire District had the funds to do that, and they could not manage the money, and they turned the funds back to us. So now they're struggling with the same, the same issues as we are hearing down in Hampton. 
Um, but the, our expectation is that we're going to hear about, you know, what are the priorities locally. I, it would be important to talk about the investments that have already been made, you know, as, as you all know, into the beach area. Um, but at the end of the night, Councillor Sununu is going to press back, I'm sure. I, I can't guarantee this. I'm not going to speak for him. But based on our experience with him, his comments are going to be, um, are these what's right for the region? And if they're what's right for the region, what other priorities are you not going to do? I don't know that he feels strongly about the three mm -hmm. priorities that came forward from Rockingham that are in the draft. I would suspect that he um, will have his own opinions. Um, but of all the councillors, he is one that that is looking to really meet regional needs and still stay financially uh, balanced. And that's the one point, I think, in this 10-year plan update with the work we've done with the planning commissions to to look at all the priorities statewide through a similar lens, similar objective criteria, we've had a real opportunity to make additions, not as many as we want. Uh, it's all within the constraints that we have, but we've been able to balance. Uh, for years and years and years we've heard no new projects, no new projects, we're going to take projects out, all we're going to do is remove them and make it financially stable. We're at that point now where we can trade off a little bit, and I think what we've tried to do is balance continuing preservation and maintenance, but there's a little bit of room for new stuff. So um, I guess the point being, we'll be there to receive the comments. The five councillors are the voting members that will determine what goes to Governor Hassan's desk. And um, they're going to be looking to hear strongly from those advocates for projects. Um, one, that the projects are important, and two, what are the, the, the folks willing to give up or what are they willing to bring to the table financially to make sure those projects can happen. Bill, let me ask you a question. Um, if there is money, let, let's just say hypothetically for a minute, that we are able to convince Governor, um, Governor Sununu, Governor Council Sununu, who then convinces his partners, who then convinces the, uh, the governor that Ocean Boulevard should be a priority. And let's just say, for example, we earmark that the cost of the reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard <coughs> is $12 million. The opportunity to then use that money as matching money for any federal grant money that we would happen to go after over and above that, can that money be used as matching? Not if it's federal highway dollars. Because so uh, anything that's in this, pretty much for highway and bridge stuff, anything that's in this document that's not on a turnpike system is already federal dollars. Okay. So, and in the federal highway world, we can't match federal with federal. Okay. So let's keep with the example of a $12 million project. If does that come with a, a local match? Or is it a straight 100% um, federal higher dollar? Initially, there's no determination made. <coughs> Certainly, if there were opportunity to bring other funds into it, that makes it a more competitive opportunity for the, for the council to consider. Okay. Is there a figure? Uh, are we just pulling figures out of them? Of what, Ocean Boulevard? It, when we were doing the, uh, during the construction, early construction of the beach uh, state park, we had a engineering, the guys that were doing the engineering for that project came up and gave me a, an estimate of Ocean Boulevard from Havel to Ashworth, um, redoing the entire street <coughs> down to the original level. Um, sewage, um, adding more, um, um, what's the, the word that people use, um, for uh, drainage. Permeable surface. Yeah, those types of things. Um, and then um, sidewalks on the west side. Um, that estimate at that time was eight million. So knowing that that was uh, three years ago or so, four years ago, 
you know, I'm just throwing out a, a figure of, of 20 million right now, just kind of grabbing it. We don't have a, an actual cost, but I know it would be more than 8 million that we were given four years ago. So, um, any other comments? Yeah, Bob? John. Um, I think what I remember we put the bridge went in there just to kind of keep it on the radar that that was coming down the road and it would be an important part, you know, to connect Hampton Beach, you know, with the others with Seabrook. But if you're looking at six point nine million dollars for the bridge, in my mind, it doesn't make more sense to bring more people over that bridge to fix the bridge without fixing the boulevard when people get here. Is it possible to say that, that the boulevard might be more important <coughs> than the bridge? Because if you go to Epping, you're gonna, you know, the people in Epping, that's their community, it's their town, there's a ton of stuff happening over there. <coughs> you know, you don't, might not want to have the fight with them, but who's sticking up for the bridge? You know, maybe we could swap that out and then we're not looking for $12 million, we're looking for less than half. Does that work like that? No, Bob, I remember at one of these meetings you know, 10 years ago, maybe, I can't remember how long ago, that the bridge was in need of continual repair. But it wasn't. It, this was the fix, this, the short term fix for the bridge, was to put it on this as opposed to we all wanted a four lane bridge. Uh, but we, we were settling for the $6 million to keep the bridge in working order. I mean, is, is that, does that make sense? You. Do you think the bridge is more important than the boulevard? If the bridge doesn't work, I think it's we're in trouble. No, they just spent a lot of money on it. But it was a continual upkeep on that bridge, so it would continue to work. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm asking uh, Bill. I'm not sure. The, the money that's in the draft would continue that, you know, to rehabilitate the bridge. Uh, um, I think in... <coughs> In, in the decision by the department to focus on the three projects that were draft that are in the draft, it goes back to our mantra lately of preservation, maintenance, safety, and red listed bridges. So preserving, maintaining the <coughs> bridge that's there, trying to continue the rehabilitation. Um, certainly there's you know, recent attention as related to safety. Um, that the bridge has drawn. Um, I think the same would hold true for the intersection of, of 1 and 88, which is the Hampton Falls project. Um, Epping, um, I can't get into my boss's heads about everything. I think the, the, the reality about Epping is it was um, a section of 125 that, that made sense. We've been doing a lot of work in the Plasto King scenario coming up 125. And that's a section in the Epping area that hasn't been addressed through developer uh, improvements or, or things along the way. But Chuck, I think to, to both of you, I think the the trade-off, if that's what the, as individuals or as a commission, you feel that those trade-offs for Ocean Boulevard versus the bridge make the most sense, that you can make arguments for it, that's what the councilor and that's what uh, the department officials are going to be looking to, to hear. But Based then on that, and based what, what Bob was saying, the trade-off, and the trade-off to me is, sounds fine. However, that only, if, if we're going to assume for a minute that, that the cost is $12 million, that's only going to get us halfway down Ocean Boulevard. And where do we come up with the other $6 million? Unless we take, my thought process being that we take the bridge money and we take um, Hampton Falls. And that gives us our 12 million, or close to. Um, and I mean, I'm just looking at it from, I would hate to be fighting and say, okay, we finally got it on, but right now it's only 6 million. Um, and we know it's gonna cost from Haverhill to Ashworth more than 6 million. What are they gonna do in Hampton Falls? Re do you have a the Taylor River Bridge, I think it says. Taylor River Bridge? Mm -hmm. No, it's an intersection. Mm -hmm. They want to try to reconfigure <coughs> the intersection of one and where uh, those double eight. lights are there. Yeah. yeah. 
But that doesn't seem to be a big problem, and I can't imagine the people in Hampton Falls would want it. That's where it's going to be a well, problem locally. Yeah. If they, the people that live there fight fight that every time. They they had many chances to redevelop out of, there. Out of the Regional Planning Commission recommendations, and this is one of the things the department takes, so I, I hope Hampton Falls officials smoke well, they'll up. Show up. This was the number four priority that came out of the region. That, that mm -hmm. wouldn't have come so high without some level of involvement. <coughs> I'm not defending for the decisions that were made. It just uh, that that's one of the factors that the department looked at is this was the number of the four priority that came out of the planning commissions. But that's a real the replacement of the Taylor River Bridge. That's not the pro that's not the same project, mm -hmm. Dick. It's the one below that. Um, on page twenty five. Hampton Falls intersection, intersection capacity improvements. Yes. That's it. All right. Yeah. Now where does the other one factor in? The, the one above it? It doesn't. That's an entirely separate project. So the only ones that are being considered is this one here, the one, the, the middle one, as far as Hampton Falls. The, the Hampton, the, the project above in that listing has been in the 10 year plan for a number of years. And it's a project that carries 95 over the Taylor River Bridge. And that's, that's gonna be constructed in a couple of years. Um, see, see where it says new project under the second Hampton right. Falls. Yes, it is. Uh, where am I looking here? That's the four point seven million. All right. And what project. I what, and what I was saying is that if you took the bridge and this, that gives us over ten million. Now, uh, this is my observation of our hearing so far. There are many groups, individuals, and communities that are not considering what should be removed. You know, we were up in Summersworth recently and we heard about um, Exit 10 as something that's popping up on their radar screen again. And we have $530 million worth of unfunded turnpike projects. And they just want us to add another $80 million worth of projects without any thought of where that revenue is going to come from, knowing that there's a half a billion dollars ahead of them in the queue that don't have any funding. So it would not be unheard of for people to say, look, we simply need this project. It needs to be in the queue before Project X. We feel it's more impro you know, important than Projects Y and Z. Um, without a, a trade-off, I can tell you the councilors are trying to take a close look and be fiscally um, responsible in that regard to try to balance. So if you trade off the bridge, saying it's not that important, we think we're more important, the uh, boulevard's more important. Could that factor the bridge getting pulled out and the boulevard getting pushed back as well, and something else going ahead of the bridge? It's all politics this point forward. <laughs> so, I mean, so that's it, it possible. But, but the reality, right, let's talk about and, and this is just my opinion. The reality of the bridge, of it, money being just spent on rehab of the bridge, rehab, not building a brand new bridge. There is a reason it's red list. And there's a reason it's number 19 out of thousands of bridges and so but what is that reason? I mean, I'm, I'm when not you said an engineer, it was, I'm not an expert. Yeah. But red listed, was that before or after they spent all of this money recently? It's still. It's still red listed? Red listed bridge. I mean, the bridge is gone. It doesn't matter how nice Ocean Boulevard is. We're going to lose half the people trying to use Ocean Boulevard. Right? Am I wrong? Be a tough commute for my two officers. They <laughs> <laughs> have to put a ferry in. Well, then, then, then you, <laughs> <laughs> without, and I know you have to be very careful in your response, but if we don't suggest then, uh, we don't suggest the bridge, but we then suggest that Epping and Hampton Falls is not in, is not shouldn't be, it's not to say that they're not important but we should be given a higher priority that's still keeping 
those funds within those three projects and it taking two money from those two projects into into Ocean Boulevard and keeping the bridge. I mean, is that is that a reasonable statement to a, to a governance council? But it's not to say, Governor Council or Sununu, we want you to take money out of another county and give it to Rockingham County because it, it, we would look foolish when we're already getting 50% of the, the 50 million. Right? But if you said to Chris, you know, the money you spent in Hampton, you, when you spent it, you were going to get a quick payback. When we talk about dread, dread's saying, well, we're self funded. They don't, they don't really see the Roman Mills tax. But certainly, Governor's Council of Sununu sees the Roman Mills tax. And I don't know what kind of payback they get. Or maybe DOT doesn't care about, you know, fixing this corner versus making more money down in Hampton Beach. But Chris might. Yeah. All right. So then would the commissioners, because I, I want to be very careful in my presentation, do the commissioners here tonight feel more comfortable for me to stay away from suggesting removing the bridge, but more or less encouraging that Ocean Boulevard uh, be put into the plan and whether or not funds can be moved within the other two projects of Rockingham County or any other project, new project within the state. But we would encourage those projects to stay, the bridge and Ocean Boulevard. Is that? One thing, maybe they should look at, um, you know, as this process has gone on, like Chuck brought up, mentioning that it was a continuing project, instead of replacing the bridge, maybe they do need to look at what happened recently this weekend, mm -hmm. uh, where there were those fatalities. And the state obviously wants to have more of these type of races and stuff like that. I mean, it seems to be the way that that ha seems to be going. Maybe they do need to look at doing a total new bridge over because just doing what they're doing now is not going to make for any added space. It's just going to continue the bridge in the way that it's been. And maybe in the next 10 years or the following 10 years, they're going to need a bigger bridge. So maybe they ought to just face up to that now. I mean, there was a lot of uh, support for a totally new bridge before in all of the mm -hmm. talks that went on. It was, and it was $25 million at the time. Maybe I might be off. Yeah, of well, and maybe there are more ways to get even added federal funds. I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, maybe just to continue for the next 10 years to have this bridge like it is now, that's not going to do anything to help the issue of having safety issues like were recently experienced. That bridge isn't going to get changed in 10 years, though. You know, I've gone over that bridge hundreds well, of times. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe they don't need to plan <coughs> on spending more money onto it and put it for the following 10 years to redo the bridge totally. I, I was there, you know, shortly after that accident. You know, I've gone over that bridge hundreds of times on my bicycle. That what happened there was, was just utterly ridiculous in the speed and the condition that driver I think when eventually comes out I, I don't know you know that uh, that should come into play that particular accident maybe we could have better signage maybe we can get the bikes on the sidewalks or something you know that that car crossed way over that's a whole different part of the story that I don't think will come up with this meeting Maybe the you know maybe there does need to be more consideration for a new bridge though. I mean there was a lot of support for that to begin with, and I think what has happened by doctoring it, what they're doing now, I don't think that was people's first choice. It was strictly because. <coughs> but is it more important than the boulevard? Yeah, that's arguing against our so mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just yeah, thinking out loud. I agree. We're arguing you know, against ourselves. We're, you know, what's saying the new bridge? What's what's better? You know, if you if you can have one or either or. I'm not picking it. I'm just you know, I, I and I'd probably defer it to Bill to see you know what what he thought would have better success, and maybe 
as you get closer to that night, you talk about it then, you see what's happening. Yeah. You, you find out how important Route 88 is to the neighbors that live out there, including, you know, Chris's family. They, they go through that mm. intersection all the time. Yeah. Maybe it's worse or better than we think it is. What's your experience, Bill, on, on the ability to move the program? In other words, I assume a number of these projects will fall by the wayside somewhere along the line. Environmental reasons, local opposition, any number of things. Um, so you, got, you end up with holes in the program, yeah. I would think. That's why when we go back to this, excuse me, when we go back to this handout, the first sheet that I flagged that shows it's 227 million in the hole. <laughs> if, that, <coughs> excuse me. if that were closer to about 150 million, that's what we shoot for, for that exact reason. That's about a year's worth of funding. There are projects that environmentally or, or for public lack of public support or financial reasons that, that drop. That gives us a little bit of a, a backup. We call it on shelf. You know, projects that are ready to go in case funds become available or something else drops off. So even in a, in a constrained planning document, we try to add a little bit extra to move, to, to have the ability of moving a project up. Um, that happens all the time. Yeah. So we, we try, I think, that, um, in, in our conversations with the counselor, he believes that we went a little bit too far, and I think the commissioner is a little uncomfortable with the the, the number that's there today. Um, whether the council, whether the gas committee chooses to to pare that down or not, I I can't begin to guess it. Experience says Councillor Sununu will will try to pare that number down and we'll have a dogfight with the other four councillors. Okay. Rich. Yeah. Are we kind of at a disadvantage because the Ocean Boulevard project is not even included in this plan? Yes. In my opinion, yes. It's only to the dance, yeah. And, and, and it's because that one, the town of Hampton can't afford to, to do it. Two, the state of New Hampshire can't afford to pay for it. The only way we can get that done, in my estimation, is through federal funds. So what do we have as ammunition to promote us taking the priority over those other three projects? Well, I think... I mean, you, you, you mentioned a figure of what, uh, what was the figure? Million. 14, 12 million dollars. Is there, like, documentation to back that up as to what this whole project would be, what it entails, and so on? Because I assume that when these plans are put together, there is a lot of preliminary work done ahead of time for it to be included, isn't there? <laughs> well, the, the Maybe there is some level enough. of work that goes into all the project estimates. Um, the newer projects that were added in this draft, DOT design staff did take a closer look than what the numbers were that were provided to us by the Regional Planning Commissions. Uh, Rockingham does a pretty good job in developing cost estimates for projects. Some of the other regions do not. <laughs> um, so if, you know, and I know we, we took a cursory look at what had been done as part of the, the, the engineering efforts when the, when the shell was being designed. Um, from a planning level effort mm -hmm. um, at this point in time, I think that 10 to 12 million dollars is a reasonable number for Ocean Boulevard. And, and keep in mind, we used that number, I think we used the 10 million dollar number when we did in fact apply for that federal grant, which we did, did not get. And part of the reasoning back when we went through that effort, and although the state of New Hampshire rated it as their number one priority for the state of New Hampshire that year. I think the feedback from Washington came back was that, well, something's missing here because this, this project is not anywhere in the 10-year plan of the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why, why should we fund a $10 million grant 
when it's not even in the books. And that's and that's the whole that's the whole key, I think, for getting money out of here or applying for grants and getting it from another federal source and then giving up the money from here, right? Because by us getting our name on in, in, in this doesn't necessarily mean that the money to fund it will come from this. It might come from one of those federal funding sources that we had applied for or lost that if we reapply, might get now because they'll, they'll notice that we are on the plan. So, I think you should make that point yeah. strongly. That's a good point. Okay. So I guess what I'm hearing from people, and, and by the way, everybody's invited to attend, not if, and if you can't make Epping to go to another one. Uh, but I guess my, my sense from what I'm hearing from the commission is that let's stay away from discussions around the bridge. Um, talk about the importance of Ocean Boulevard and, and just ask for consideration of other um, area, uh, other areas in Rockingham County to see if we can find some additional funds for that. Okay. The reality for us, the last comment I'll make, is that we don't have enough revenue. You know, it, it's, it's clear, and I don't, I have it out in the car, I didn't bring it in with me tonight, but uh, all nine of the regional planning commissions submitted both what we thought was reasonable to afford and to prioritize and what was truly needed within each of the regions. And it was factors of a minimum of two to three times up to five to seven times more than the available revenues um, than exist. And, and the counselors don't have any authority over revenue generation. The most popular one is taught well, the, the revenue option that's most talked about at the hearings is, is gas tax. Um, and there are some counselors that are absolutely for gas tax. There are some that haven't really weighed in yet. Um, but in order to have a realistic discussion, I think the other thing that would be important for the commission to do if you have the ability is to get your legislators to the hearings. Um, we have not had a good turnout from state reps or state senators. Um, I do know that Senator Stiles is planning on attending uh, the Epping meeting mm -hmm. to talk about a couple of projects. Uh, I don't know about the other reps, and I don't know what the positions are on, on the various revenue options that have been discussed. But that needs to be a part of the conversation, whether it's, it's taken up by the commission or others. It's the only way that we're going to be able to to meet the needs of, of the state is to to look at increased revenue at some point in time. Okay, if there's no further discussion on that, let's move on.